Hey everybody, welcome back. Today we're gonna to be doing our product review for the Ninja Sizzle GR101. Do you need to reserve some space on your countertop for this? Well, watch this video and find out. So you ready? Let's get into this. Just a quick note, our reviews are based upon the things that we think are important. That might be a little bit different for you, so what we recommend doing is after watching our video, you pull up some other videos from different content creators as well. That way you get a wider range of comments and concerns to help you make a much more informed buying decision, and that is the most important thing of all. This is our Ninja Sizzle. It's a super simple little grill, and as far as controls go, all there is is a temperature dial right here that can be set anywhere from around 100 degrees up to about 500 degrees. When it's on, you see the little picture of the fire light up, and when it's off, you don't. Whoa. The whole machine's only composed of a few different pieces. You have a hinged lid that swings open, and it has a built-in screen that goes all the way through, and this is supposed to reduce splatter and virtually eliminate smoke, so they say. You have that dial on the front that we mentioned. There's not really an on-off button. It just turns on when you turn it past off. And you can see here that the temperature starts at 200, but you actually do have temperature down here. It's just somewhat below that. So if you wanted to run something lower than 200 degrees, then you're gonna be kind of guessing where to be down here. Just like if you wanna be over 400 degrees, it's gonna be up past 400 near max. And I'm assuming that max is kind of around that 500 degree mark. This is the cooking tray right here. This particular one is for the griddle. It's got a non-stick dishwasher safe surface and up front it has an integrated grease trap. With the GR101, you actually get two different trays. You have the griddle tray right here and you also have a grill tray. This is designed the exact same way with that same grease trap in the front, but the real difference is that this will give you grill marks and that won't. Down here you have a cheat sheet for the grill and the griddle along with different temperatures that you might want to set this thing to, along with examples of the type of food you might want to use for those. Also down here, it mentions to preheat the machine for seven minutes before you use it. That's something that I really recommend doing because you get much better cooking results if you preheat your stuff properly. But that really goes for all of this type of stuff, including pans. Your cooking is gonna be a lot better if you're working with a preheated surface than you are throwing it on there cold. As of the making of this video, there's two different versions of this grill. There's the GR100 and the GR101. Like I said before, this happens to be the GR101, so it has both of these different cooking services. If you were to buy the GR100, it would only come with this. Most of the time, you're gonna be able to find them both around the same price. I highly recommend getting the one that's got both pieces because I think it's just a lot better. And this griddle really expands what you can do with this. As far as noise goes, this thing is virtually silent. If I turn it all the way up to maximum, you really can't hear anything at all. You wouldn't really expect that you would because you don't typically get coil noise or anything like that. But it is kind of neat that Ninja Kitchen made a product that doesn't sound like a jackhammer. Because if you got anything else from this company, you're gonna know that loud is considered a feature. Cleaning the Ninja Sizzle is really, really easy. This non-stick surface works really well. If you do a proper preheat, not a lot sticks to this non-stick surface. And the two pans that come with this are both dishwasher safe. So really all you gotta do is wipe off some of the bits and crumbs, throw it in the dishwasher, and that's really how this comes out, just like that. As far as the lid goes, this slides right off the machine like that. So it becomes really, really easy to clean this, both on the top and the bottom. However, if you're cleaning it from the bottom, these holes here are a little bit jagged. In fact, you could probably cut yourself if you're running your hand across this. So it's probably not a good idea to do that, and I would think that most people wouldn't. But if you're using a sponge or a Brillo pad or something to clean this, you're gonna see that little bits of it are gonna get stuck in here, almost like on a cheese grater. A little bit of extra finishing probably could have helped that out because if you clean from this side, there's no such problem. It's nice and smooth. This little lid here is made out of stainless steel, so it'll likely stay pretty nice looking. You got a plastic handle on the front, but it's pretty sturdy. I don't see this getting broken off of here unless you drop this thing on the ground a bunch of times. And there's really not a whole lot to break on the hinge here either. This lid is really light, so there's not a lot of pressure on it when it's sitting open. 
can't imagine that this would really break or anything over time unless you're grabbing this and tweaking it back or something like that. If you want to clean underneath your grill surface, really the only place you're going to get any kind of oil or grime is going to be right around the edges here. You can see I got a little bit of discoloration here on the metal and that's just from heat. You could scrub that a little bit and that will come off. But the way this is designed, that's really hard to get in between these elements to get to it. You could probably get the elements off of this by taking these screws out. But remember, if you do anything like that, you're going to void your warranty. So I wouldn't recommend doing that. However, it's really the only way you can get to anything that gets up underneath here. That being said, there's not really any way that you should be able to get anything underneath this unless you're purposely trying to get it under there. I've used this thing quite a bit and there hasn't been any sign of anything like that at all. The only other thing to mention about this machine that I thought was kind of cool is that if you turn this around you can see that you have hooks on the back here for the power cable. That may seem like a big nothing burger to a lot of people but for me I appreciate that because I don't normally leave a lot of my appliances out on the countertops they all get put away. And it is nice to be able to have something to wrap the power cable around just to keep it out of the way. So really super easy to implement something like this and it's very cheap, but to me, it's really appreciated. By the way, if this is your first time here and you want to learn some cool new recipes, get some great cooking tips and tricks and all sorts of other kitchen related things, then start now by subscribing to the channel and clicking the notification bell so you never miss a thing. We did a few things to test the Ninja Sizzle. First I heated it up to 400 degrees and I used an infrared thermometer to measure the surface temperature. I went all over the surface of the griddle plate and it turned out that it was slightly higher than the stated temperature, but it was pretty consistent all the way across the surface, which is really the more important thing. To test the performance of the griddle, we did a couple of different things. First, we used the grill plate to cook a bunch of steaks. I purposely filled the entire grill up with New York steaks and I set the temperature of the grill to 375 degrees, which is the recommended temperature for that particular protein. And then every few minutes I did the regular flips and rotations of the meat. The purpose of that was to see how well the grill lines show up, but more importantly, how even the cooking was all the way across the surface. Doing something like that, you would really be able to see the differences. And a lot of times the stuff that's on the outside corners tends to not get cooked quite as much as the stuff in the middle. But if you look at the results on our steaks, we had really even grill lines on every one of these pieces of meat. And when I cut into them, they were all cooked just about the same, except for the two little small pieces on the end. And for that, I'd give it a pass just because those small pieces are thinner too. So they're gonna cook faster. It's just the way it is. There's really nothing you can do about that and that's not the fault of the grill. A couple of things I did notice though is that the holes on the top really do a lot to stop the splatter. I wasn't really getting any oil on the countertop or anything like that, which is a real big plus, but it did almost nothing to stop the smoke. Ninja advertises this thing as a virtually smokeless grill. So they make it sound like you're not gonna get any sort of smoke whatsoever. But in practice, you will get enough smoke through that to set off a smoke detector if it's close to your kitchen. That is, unless you have a range hood on close by or you have a window open or something like that. It did cut down on the smoke a little bit, but you can see right here that there's still plenty coming through. So I kind of have to call BS on that claim. They really should just say that it cuts down on smoke and go with that. Also for testing, I loaded up the griddle completely with breakfast stuff. I put pancakes, eggs, bacon, and sausage all on the griddle at the same time. The manual recommends slightly different temperatures for the bacon, the sausage, and the pancake. But I did the whole thing at 400 degrees anyway just to see what kind of result I'd get. And you can see that you can really fit a lot on the surface of this thing. It was super cramped on the griddle to get everything on there at the same time but I was able to fit it all on there. And if you've ever tried to make a big breakfast like that, you'd have to either use a bunch of pans and create a huge mess in your kitchen with oil splatter all over your range and three pans that gotta be cleaned. Or you'd have to do things one at a time and maybe you'd have your bacon done first and it would be a little bit cold by the time your other stuff gets done. But in this case, I was able to time everything just right so everything came out at the same time and it was all hot. Also, more importantly, you can see that everything came out cooked just about the same. The eggs are a little bit dependent on how you like your eggs, and that's really a judgment call. I did them over medium for the test, and really that's just because that's how I like eggs. But really, there would have been no problem doing them sunny side up, or over easy, or anything like that. You just gotta take them off quicker. After doing that test, the one thing I would say about the Ninja Sizzle is that 
I really think they should make something like a Ninja Sizzle XL version. Maybe one that's three or four inches wider and maybe a tiny bit deeper. That would really go a long ways and it would make cooking larger meals like that a lot easier. But honestly, that's not a critique of this machine at all. It's more of a heads up for Ninja Kitchen that if they happen to see this video, that they might consider doing an XL version and I bet you it would sell pretty good. As far as the dimensions of the grill when it's closed, it is about 14 and a quarter inches wide. From the bottom, it is five and a half inches tall. And as far as depth goes, we're talking about, with the knob sticking out a tiny bit, about 13 and a half inches. The height of the machine with the lid open is gonna be 15 and a half inches tall. And with that lid open, it's actually gonna lean back a little bit further too. So that would be 16 and a half. So if you're worried about counter space, that's how much you need. One other quick critique though is that power cord, that really needs to be longer. I mean, that's the entire length. It's not bad if you're cooking on your countertop, but if you're cooking on an island or something like that, you could be stretching that cable a little bit far. The Ninja Sizzle GR101 is a pretty interesting little grill. However, most of its functions get covered by a lot of different small kitchen appliances, including a few from Ninja Kitchen themselves. In my opinion, the main draw is the griddle plate. It works really well, it's decent size, it's easy to clean, and it heats pretty evenly. That means if you're thinking about purchasing a Ninja Sizzle, you need to think about the GR101 model like we have in this review, and not the GR100. Remember, the 100 doesn't come with a griddle, and a lot of times you can get that 101 for the same price. If you'd like a little bit more information about the Ninja Sizzle GR101, I do have an Amazon affiliate link for it down in the description of the video. If you buy anything through those links, I do make a small commission, but it doesn't change the price that you pay, one cent. If you like this video, you might want to check out our review right here for the Ninja XL Smart Grill. That covers a lot of the same stuff, and you might find that it's a little bit more versatile as well. Well, that's it for now. I hope to see you back again here really soon. And until that time, I'm Joe and I hope you have a phenomenal day. Take it easy.